Our last lecture video in this unit is all about our views, how we look at the workbooks and the worksheets. Things we're going to take a look at in this video is we're going to take a look at the zoom function. We're going to take a look at how to arrange our windows, how to arrange multiple workbooks, and also add the freeze panes. I created a couple of workbooks in preparation for this video. The one you're looking at right now is not an accident. This is intentional and I'll explain it in just a second. We want to look at how to zoom. In A1, I have something in there. You can't really see it, so we need to zoom in on it. At the bottom right hand side of the window, we have the sliding bar. As you can see, it's over here and I can move it further out. This makes it even smaller. Now it's really hard to read, if not impossible. Or I can zoom in by clicking to the side and I'm zooming in. Or I can grab and drag it open or drag it over. And as you can see, that very small text has now become something that you can see. So let's play with the zoom again, zooming out, zooming in. We can also adjust zoom by going to the view tab, going to the zoom area on the ribbon bar and clicking here. From here, we can use some preset magnifications or we can use a custom magnification. Another thing we can do, let me zoom out real fast so this becomes impossible to read, is highlight what we're looking at. So I highlight this and I go zoom to selection. What this will do is it will zoom in on what I selected, which can be very handy if you don't want to mess around with the zooms down here or the zooms from the view tab and, and try to zoom in and then focus in on what you want. If you highlight what you're looking at and then go to zoom to selection, it will go quickly to where you want it to go. There is a good chance that as you start playing with Excel, you might need multiple workbooks open. Well, there are different ways that you can look at different workbooks. The first way is what we call the work switch. Now, this is not an official Microsoft term. This is something we use in the corporate world. We call it the work switch because you might be looking at something, let's say you're checking your personal emails or you're on YouTube and the boss comes in and you wanna switch quickly between windows. Now, as a teacher, I can tell you right now, I had students who tried to pull this and then I told them what the official name was and they were like, oh, you know about that? Yes, I know about that. If you hold the alt tab button on your keyboard, you will get what we call the work switch. What this is, is that it will open up all of the available windows that are on your computer. All of the available programs will show up when you hold the work switch button, the alt tab button. In your Excel, you also have the abilities to switch windows. If you go to your view tab, go to your windows group right here, and you can switch windows by clicking on this button. As you see, I have different workbooks open. Go to view, switch windows. And as you can see, I have different Excel workbooks that are open. You can open them like this. Another thing that you can do is arrange the multiple workbooks. If you go to, again, your view tab and you go to your windows ribbon area, you can go to arrange all and it will ask you, how do you want to arrange your windows? You can do tiled. Let's do another one. We'll do horizontal. We'll do vertical. We'll do cascade. What that did is it did it like this, so they're all cascading off each other. And so you can arrange them like that. Another feature you can do, let me close some of these outs or minimize some of these so we can see them, is let's say I have this work, workbook right here, book three, and I just will type in some gobbledygook right there. And I have another worksheet that we're gonna play with in a minute when we talk about the freeze panes. And I need to see both of these worksheets at the same time. 
I could click back and forth between the different tabs, but that gets to be a pain in the neck. Or I can have both of them open at the same time in new windows. I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to new window. What this does is it doesn't create a new document. It doesn't create a new workbook, which you kind of would think by new window. What it does is it just opens up another instance of the workbook you have open. It just opens this other tab in another window. So let me click new window and here we go. Let me put them side by side for you. This is the same workbook you see here. Sheet 10, sheet 10, it's the same workbook. But let's say that I'm playing with the budget and I want to look at my yearly budget, my monthly budget, or my quarterly budget. I can have the same workbook open in different windows if I need to in order to access that information. So I don't have to keep clicking back and forth. This is very handy. Once again, that's view and new window. And the things you do in one window affect the other window. So for example, let me go into sheet one here and we'll add some numbers. We'll count by two. Let me zoom into selection here. As you see, I've put in two, four, six, eight, right? In sheet one, same workbook. Let's look at sheet one now. There are the same numbers from over here. Let me zoom in over here to that. As you can see, the changes you make in one affect the other one because it's the same workbook. The final thing, let me close out one of these. The final thing we need to be able to do is add a freeze pane. Let me get in a little bit further to this. As you can see, I've got some headers here. And as I scroll down, the headers disappear. Well, let's say I'm on row 120. I might forget what column A, B, and C were all about. There's a way to freeze information. So as you scroll down or scroll over, that information remains there. How to get there? This is something called again, freeze panes. We're going to go to our view tab and we're looking for the windows ribbon area. And here is freeze panes. When you click on the drop down for freeze panes, you're selected with freeze panes, freeze top row, and freeze first column. I want this row to be frozen. So as I scroll down, it remains there. Go to freeze panes. I'm going to do freeze top row because this is the top row. Click on that. Now watch this top row as I scroll down. It stays there. So no matter how far I scroll down, that is there. But you know, that's not really the best way. I want there to be separation because as you scroll down, it kind of just merges into each other. So I want this and above to be frozen. So let me go back to my freeze panes. I'm going to click unfreeze. Now what happens is I scroll down, it's all moving. I'm going to click on three. Now this is the pane I want frozen, but you don't click on the pane you want frozen in this case. You click below where you want frozen. You go over to freeze panes. You click freeze panes on this one because this is not the top row and this isn't the first column. Click on this. Now as I scroll down, the blue should remain and example should remain, but the number should change. There we go. See one and two is staying the same, but as we scroll down, those will change. And that's very handy if you have a very long or big workbook that you need to scroll through or worksheet you need to scroll through and maybe forget what's going on over here. Let me unfreeze this. And let's say I have names over here. I want this column to be frozen. Let me go back to freeze panes, freeze the first column. And now watch what happens. This whole column should stay the same while these move over. So there you go. And you can adjust the freeze panes. Very important to know how to do very handy as you start working with bigger and bigger worksheets and bigger, and bigger workbooks. That's going to conclude unit two. Hopefully you're getting this. You're spending some time also doing hands on with these different things that we're showing you. It is only through doing the hands on examples and practices yourself that you really will retain this information. 
simply watching somebody else play with software and doing things in software, do you really know good as far as learning this? As you're going through these videos, as you're going through the individual lessons, be sure to spend time practicing the skills that we show you and you will learn Excel both for personal and professional use as well as for the exam. Until unit three, have fun studying out there and goodbye for now. For even more great tutorials and our complete catalog of online courses, please visit us at mrfordsclass.com.